When I was a kid, I wanted to learn how to drive. I was 14 or 15 years old. All my friends had go-karts, motorcycles. My little three-year-old cousin was driving the tractor while her family pulled tobacco. Uh, my best friend, who was the exact same age as me, his dad was taking him to a local graveyard and letting him drive around and learn to drive. And my parents, they weren't teaching me how to drive. And this is a story about how important it is when you're a parent to not neglect your responsibilities. So, I decided to take matters into my own hands. My dad was working first shift. It was summertime and my mom was working third shift. So we had our mom at home sleeping all day and we we're at home all day and we have to be quiet because somebody's trying to sleep. It was the best summer ever. So I decided to enjoy a little outdoor time with my sister by going out to the front yard where the car was parked. Yes, we're the kind of people that have dead lawns because we park our cars in the lawn. Yes. So I get the keys to Mama's 67 Volkswagen and I go out and I get in the car and decide to do a little driving in the front yard. Now this is not a big yard. This is a small yard in town. As I've mentioned before, we lived in town. We had curbs and our house was on an embankment so that the street and our driveways were down a hill from the top level part of the yard. And so I'm on the flat part of the yard and all I'm doing is pulling the car as far forward as I can and then backing it up as far as I can and then pulling it forward and then backing it up. That's it. That's the big, that's the thrill of the century. Mom's in the house asleep. My sister is watching. At one point, I back the car up just a little too far and it rolls over the embankment and down into the church driveway that was behind me. Our driveway was in front of me. The church driveway that was next door to our house was behind me. Back down into the driveway. I can't go any farther backwards. And I can't go forward now because the bottom of the car is rubbing on the embankment. I can back up, but only so far. When I pull forward, the bottom of the car hangs on the embankment. And I am terrified. And so I keep going back and forth, back and get a running start and go and back and get a running start and go again. And nothing's working. And then I figure it out. The embankment gets shorter and shorter the farther up the driveway you go. So I'm turning right into the yard. But if I turn left, it'll be a smaller portion of embankment and I'll be able to get over it. So I cut it as hard as I can to the left. Back it up as far as I can go. Put it in first gear. I think I've got it figured out and it's time to really go for it. So I gun it and I go right over the embankment and I ram it right into the house. So, I'm waiting for my mom to come running out of the house and start beating me. You know, something bad is gonna happen now. Nothing happens, we didn't wake her up. My mom, who could be awakened by the slightest change in the volume of the TV was not awakened by the sound of her own car ramming into the side of the house that she was sleeping on. Back the car up, it's hard to steer for some reason. I pull the car back around where it goes. I get it in place, I get out and look, and the bit, <sighs> the fender is bent all the way in. Just, this is not, a little tap. It is a, I've had a major car accident in my front yard in first gear. Major damage to the front passenger side fender. And we're just gonna wait it out. Let's see what happens now. You know, it's, what, you know we, there was nothing to do. We weren't gonna wake my mom up. Why wake the woman up? It's like, 
when you're going to tell somebody that you wrecked their car while they were sleeping, you should at least let them complete their full sleep cycle before you do that, I would say. So mom wakes up. As I said, the damaged fender is on the passenger side. She says she needs to go to the store, probably to get some snuff. Yeah, we'll go with you. We may have been terrified, and I was especially terrified because I did it. This was so terrifying, even my sister was terrified, and she wasn't even guilty of anything. But we were always up for a trip to the store. Mom comes out, gets in the car, she never even sees the damage to the fender because she's getting in the driver's side. And we start driving up the road, and Mom is like, why is it so hard to steer? And we're like, mm, I don't know, something must be wrong with the car. <laughs> and she's saying, what's that smell? It smells like rubber burning. And we're like, who knows? Who knows what's going on? We get all the way to the store. My mom gets out of the car, and she's like, I got to check the car out. I got to see what's going on around here. And so... <laughs> and I just remembered being glad that this was happening in public because I knew that she probably wouldn't hit me in public, at least not the way she would hit me in private. And so she would have to keep it under control. It's kind of like when people break up with somebody in a public place. My mom found out that I wrecked her car in a public place so that it would help her stay under control. It worked out perfectly. So she gets out, she sees the damage. Obviously she knew that it was her and my dad's fault for not teaching me to drive and letting me drive enough. I mean, I'm sure that the sense of personal responsibility was hitting her pretty hard at that time. She goes in the store, gets her snuff, and we go home. Then the preparation for my dad getting home, and I think that's really what it was all about. She knew that there was no need to even get mad. She even told me, she was like, I'm not going to give you a whipping because your dad is going to give you such a horrible whipping that you, that's going to be more than anybody deserves. So you don't, you don't need to be whipped twice, you know, because, because daddy's coming. And so the preparation for daddy getting home starts, you know, we got to have daddy some good food to eat. I believe the plan was to let him eat first so that he wouldn't be hungry when he found out because my dad was angry when he was hungry. My mom would then take him out, show him what I had done. While they were outside, I then prepared for his return to the house. I had the phone book open to some car repair places. I had all the money that I had saved up from mowing yards. I don't know how much it was, but like several 20s. I had all my money stuck in the crease of the phone book, so it was sitting there ready, you know, here, take my money to, to pay for this. And I had his favorite belt for whipping me laid out and prepared for him so that he didn't even have to go to his bedroom to retrieve his favorite whipping belt. It was right there so that the beating could commence right away. He ate, he went outside, it was very matter of fact. He came back inside, he picked up the belt, he gave me a whipping. I also, my mom had, I think, I, I don't remember how many pairs of underwear and pants I have. It's the only time I'd ever done that in my life. The multiple layers. I had a whole bunch of underwear and pants on. He whipped me and, and he took the money too. They took the money. Then they went and got a fender. I remember it was a, it was a big blue fender. And my dad made me uh, take the old fender off of the car. And I don't know for sure, but it seemed like to me there was a bolt like every two inches all the way around that fender. It was so many bolts. And I remember I was laying there in the yard. It's a hot summertime and I'm undoing the bolts. And I'm like, Danny, my arm's tired. You should have thought about that before you wrecked the car. So we took the fender off and put the new fender on. We drove around with the blue fender for a little while. Eventually, we got the car painted and that was that. I would like to point out that none of this punishment did any good. Nobody ever changed my behavior with a whipping. I promise you that. 
The only thing a whipping did was ensure that whatever you hit me for, I was definitely going to do a lot more of that. Taking the money hurt. That stung a bit. And making me take the fender off was ridiculous. My dad taking me out in the front yard, spending time with me, and letting me use tools to do actual work on a car, it was like a reward. All in all, it was the dumbest punishment ever. It didn't teach me anything. And it led to things like me, a year later, running from the police in that same car. Hope you liked the story, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you know anybody that might enjoy this, share it with them, like, really share. Not stupid, click the share button, but like, tell somebody about it. And also, leave comments. I know it's kind of a hassle, and if you're not logged in and all that stuff, fine. But if you have anything that you think would really be helpful to me, I would love to hear it. Or if you have any recommendations or requests, I would love to hear that too. New videos every Thursday at 2. Check them out. Later.